Hey folks, my name is Pat Schloss, and I'm the host of Code Club. Over the past couple dozen episodes, I don't know how many at this point, we've been working through a project looking at exact and Amplicon sequence variants within uh, the field of microbial ecology and how they're used. I'm using this as a platform to talk about different practices in reproducible research. We've talked about a lot of things like using the command line, using make, using version control, using R, uh, using literate documents like R Markdown, and throwing it all together to look at this question of what threshold um, should we be using to bin sequences together as a unit of inference for microbial ecology. Now, again, this might sound like it's way far too into the weeds for microbiologists, um, that you know, if you're outside of microbiology, you shouldn't be paying attention. But trust me, you'll learn a lot as you watch about how we can use reproducible practices to go through a data analysis plan. And of course, if you're a microbiologist who's interested in microbial ecology, you might learn something about whether or not we should be using exact sequence variants or Amplicon sequence variants. So the goal of today's episode is to determine the threshold that we might want to use to get one ASV per genome. And we could use exact sequence variants, so where an ASV where the radius is zero, um, or diameter is zero, or an ASV where uh, perhaps the diameter is 5%, 5% variation between any of the sequences within the ASV. So uh, you'll recall that in the last couple of episodes, we've talked about how we could build out those ASVs. And today, we're going to take those on. And again, what I'm thinking about creating is a plot where the y-axis will be the number of ASVs and the x-axis will be the threshold. And then each line would represent the number of ASVs that we see per genome um, for those different thresholds. And then we could do some faceting uh, by the region um, so we don't get overwhelmed with lines on the plot. Um, and the line that I want to draw isn't because we've got you know thousands of genomes in here is I don't want to show the average. Um, what I want to show is the 95% confidence interval or the 95th percentile. And so, you know, if I see a threshold of say 0.03 and the number of ASVs is two, then that means that 95% of the genomes had two or fewer ASVs per genome. Okay, uh, that's another way to summarize the data. What we're going to see in the next few episodes really are different strategies for thinking about all these variables we have. So let's get into the R. There's really nothing new here um, except thinking through the problem and seeing a lot of the commands we've seen in previous episodes in different contexts. So um, I've got my issue here, issue number 35. I'm going to come over to my terminal, uh, git checkout, uh, or git issue. You know, actually, let me show you this other way we can check out a branch. Git checkout hyphen B issue 35. This then does both create the branch and then checks it out. So we've been doing git branch issue 35 and then git checkout issue 35. Git checkout hyphen B makes the branch for you. So it's a little bit more convenient. Um, I think I do both, <laughs> uh, both approaches and I, I don't know why I pick one over the other. Uh, you'll see it's red um, and that's because I've already put in a template for today's episode, making this as an exploratory file with an R Markdown document. Um, before I forget, let me go ahead and open this uh, or create the rule for this in my make file. So I'll do Adam period. So here I am in my make file and I will go ahead and add it here. Um, so I think I copied it, but I forget. Um, tab that in and I want MD and I need to add the backslash. So now my make file is good to go. Um, I'll go ahead and close out. Um, Adam, and I'll fire up our studio. And so if I open up my new um, document, the title I've given it is determine the threshold needed to get one ASV per genome. Should update my date here, uh, the date being the 24th. Uh, it's Thanksgiving week. And uh, I want my chunk output to go to the console as I'm developing this because if you've watched the other episodes, you know I really struggle with this. And what I've roughed in here are uh, the code from previous episodes to read in the metadata, as well as the EASV data. Um, so we'll come back to this. Um, and so this is the overview that I've copied from the GitHub issue. 
And I want to start thinking about how we're going to do this, right? So I'll put in my code chunk and trying to think through the problem would be to get a one genome per um, species. So we'll have to figure out how to do that. We've done that in previous episodes. We then will want to um, aggregate data by um, species or by genome, because they'll be the same thing for our purposes. And we will then want to count uh, the number of um, EASVs uh, per genome uh, for, so we want to aggregate by, by species genome, by the region, right? So V4, V3, 5, V19, whatever, and by threshold, I think that's it. And then we want to, we want to count the number of EASVs per, um, per grouping, right? And then we'd like to plot the number of, um, or determine the 90th or 95th uh, percentile uh, for each grouping. So each, um, for each region and threshold. And then we wanna plot the 95th percentile um, as a function of um, the region and threshold. Okay, uh, so let me make sure it covers my issue. So create a line plot of 95th percentile for each threshold um, um, at a different number of operons per genome. Okay, so that's the other thing that we have to remember is that these genomes have anywhere between like one and 25 operons. So I wanna add to this also um, number of operons, uh, to R and operon per genome. Um, so we want to count that and then uh, determine the 95th percentile for each region, threshold, and a number of RNs, right? Um, and here again, number of RNs. And then another plot that we'd like to make, um, so plot the, um, and maybe I'll indent this to give my comments some organization. The other thing I wanna plot is the 95th percentile um, for the number of, um, let's say, E ASVs for um, those genomes with, let's say, seven copies um, of the of the RN operon. All right. And again, one of the struggles that we have is that we have too many variables, right? Um, we have the region, we have, um, we, have the, we have the species, right? And so we're kind of aggregating across all species. We have number of copies per genome or per species. We have the threshold that we're interested in. And then, um, yeah. And so we've got these three or four variables and one strategy that we're going to look at in this case is this 95th percentile. And so this will allow us to aggregate across all of the genomes. Um, and because some of our genomes have, um, uh, some of our species have far more genomes than others, like E. coli had like 900 or something, and others might only have one, we want to balance for that. So that's, that's one thing that we're going to do is this percentile. And I'm not actually sure that 95th is what we want. That might be too stringent. It might not be stringent enough. We don't know. Um, in some ways, it's also good to know what it what it is, right? What percentile should we be using if we want to get um, a um, you know one AESV EASV or whatever we want to call it um, per region per threshold, um, and and so that's also uh, useful information to know. All right, so we'll start with these two uh, plots, and of course, in future episodes. We'll, we'll kick this issue around a little bit more to get better insight. Okay, so this is the game plan. I'm gonna come back up to uh, my code here. I'm gonna go ahead and start by loading my libraries. And as that's loading, I'm gonna think about what do I wanna modify from our previous code to get it to work? Um, and you know what? 
if I run these two lines, which is reading in my metadata, I see that I get the genome ID and all this taxonomic information. What I'm really interested in, however, um, I don't want to change any of that stuff, is that I'm going to do a select. Um, and let's see, I'm going to select to get um, the genome ID and the species. Okay. And I'm going to, so this then will get us our two columns. I'm going to then group by uh, the species. And as, as we saw a few episodes ago, we can then do slice sample n equals one. That will then give us one genome per species. And we can then ungroup that. And this should all work. And because I'm using that random um, slice, slice sample, I need to set my seed. Uh, this is fairly self, I don't know, <laughs> deferential or self-serving. I don't know what you call it. But I use my birth date, uh, 1976, 20 June 20th, 1976. Um, maybe use your birthday, maybe use one, whatever. So if I run that and then generate my metadata, that then gives me uh, 4,774 rows, which is the number of species in the data set, and I've got my genome ID and my species. What I can use then is I can then, as we see down here, we can do our inner join to join those together. So we now turn to EASV, um, and let me make sure that this is everything I want. So we'll read in um, the EASV column, the genome, the count, the region, the threshold, that's all good. Um, I'm going to remove these filters and selects because I want all that data. I'm not only looking at ESVs in this episode. So I'll go ahead and save this to EASV. We can then do our metadata. Ah, um, need to update the variable name, run that. And now we have metadata. Uh, it should be ES, EASV, but make sure it looks good. And again, we've got our genome ID species the EASV for that species, the number of time that ESV shows up in that species for that region and for that threshold. All right. Um, and so this again needs to be metadata EASV. So one thing that you'll notice is that my threshold column is a character. And that's because I've got ESVs in here as well as numerical values. Um, perhaps to clean that up, what I can do is I can do a mutate um, on threshold and I can then say, um, what? I'm going to do a recode. So recode, and we'll say um, 0 0.001, uh, sorry, 0, 0, 0.000 um, equals ESV. I think that works. Actually, you know what? I think recode is the opposite of what you expect it to be based on the rename function. So let's do this. Um, and run all that and see if it works. Um, problem with mutate input threshold argument dot x is missing. Ah, yeah. So I want to add threshold that. And that worked. And we now see that our threshold is 0 0.000. Um, and again, the syntax for recode is the opposite of rename. Um, that's kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, we still have this as a character type. Um, and what I'll do is um, then add to this mutate, where I'll then say threshold equals as.numeric, and then inside that threshold. Uh, we could have done as.numeric, parentheses, recode, and all that kind of nested, but it gets kind of hard to read. And so now if we look at metadata EASV, we should see that this threshold column is a double. So we're good to go. That'll be very helpful for plotting our threshold across the x axis as a continuous variable. Okay, so we've got metadata ES EASV. And we've already done the get one genome per species part. Uh, maybe I'll pull this back up here to where I did that. Um, so right here. And aggregate the data by species, genome, region, threshold, all this stuff. <laughs> so metadata EASV, and we're going to pipe that into this. And then we'll do group by, and we're going to group by um, 
our region, our threshold, and our what? Um, genome ID. Um, we could also leave in the species, but um, that's the, basically the same thing as genome ID. I don't know that my analysis really cares what the species name is. So, um, you know, maybe we'll, yeah, I don't care. I'm gonna use genome ID. And I think that's all I want. I don't actually want, I need to figure out the number of RNs per genome because I don't have a column for that. So I still need to figure that out. So count the number of ASVs per grouping and the number of RNs per genome. Okay, so that's actually a secondary thing. So we'll group that, right? And now we're gonna count. And so we'll do summarize and we will summarize the number um, of RNs per genome. And that's gonna be sum of count, right? Um, and our number of EASVs is going to be the end function, okay? And so we run all this, we will see that it takes a moment or two and we see the region, the threshold, the genome ID, the number of RNs, and the number of EASVs. Okay, I wanna go ahead and undo my grouping. Um, so I'll do the dot groups drop. Again, we run that. And the output here takes a moment. And we see the region, threshold, genome ID, and then the number of RNs in that genome, as well as the number of EASVs. So uh, this, this um, genome has five copies of the 16S gene, and it has four different versions of that gene in that genome, right? So the question is, um, that is at a threshold of zero, but if we increase to a broader threshold, does that number drop, right? And so we could look at that for this particular genome by doing something like filter uh, genome ID equals equals uh, that. And this then would show us uh, the number of times this shows up um, in the V19, it's got all of them here, but you can see um, in my output here that as we expand the definition, expand the diameter of how we define an amplicon sequence variant, the number of unique EASVs drops, okay? And so that's what we wanna look at, but again, across all of the genomes, all the species, okay? So um, now we want to know the 95th percentile for each region, threshold, and number of RRNs. So what we'll do here is a group by, um, and we will group by, again, region, threshold, um, and NRNs, uh, right? And we will then uh, summarize, and we will then summarize uh, the upper bound as, uh, what are we gonna call, do? So we'll do, um, quantile, and we will use the N EASV column and our prob, I will say 0.95, and that's gonna get us the 95th percentile. So again, this takes a moment or two to run, uh, and it's complaining. <laughs> um, which is kind of surprising. So let's look at what we're outputting here. And so we've got N E A S V's. Um, ah, S. I'm missing the S at the end. Silly things. Um, so again, we run all that. We'll get the correct output. While this is running, be sure that you've liked and subscribed to the channel. Um, that way you'll know when the next episode is released. Uh, this is Thanksgiving week, or may or may not release one on Friday. But hey, if you're a subscriber, you'll find out. You'll be the first to know. And so what we see now is that we've got our threshold and our number of RRN copies, as well as the 95th percentile. Um, and so we see for this case, um, that's basically linear, uh, the number of RRN copies increases um, with uh, the number of uh, copies in the genome. Uh, but it's not easy to look at that table. I'm now gonna go ahead and call this EASVs uh, by threshold. Uh, and region and run that uh, so that we now have that um, variable uh, stored. Um, something I forgot to do was to drop my groups. So I'll rerun that and we will now move on to plotting uh, the 95th percentile.
as a function of region, threshold, and the number of copies. And so we'll pipe this into ggplot. And our AES, our X, is going to be um, the NRNs. And our Y is going to be what? Um, the, the th um, yeah, not the threshold. Or yeah, we want to plot the 95th percentile. So it's going to be the upper bound, right? And then our um, color is going to be a threshold, right? And then we're going to make this a geom line. And I'm going to facet it by region. So I'll then do facet a wrap. And that is going to be uh, tilde region. And let's do, yeah, that's cool. So we'll go ahead and run this. And um, we get kind of crazy results. And the problem is <laughs> that I put threshold in quotes. And now the problem is that it's treating my threshold as a continuous variable rather than as a discrete or categorical variable. So for this case, what I'll do is I'm going to do as dot character threshold. And you'll recall that up ahead, up above, we had done it by, um, uh, we had we'd recast it from a character to numeric. <laughs> that will actually help us with the next plot. In this case, um, uh, we actually wanted it as a character, but that's that's fine. What I'm going to do, actually, because now that I see I've plotted this, I've got all of the thresholds, and it's really overwhelming to see in the output. So what we need to do is a filter on our threshold. So filter threshold. And we could do a bunch of things like threshold equals equals 0, thresh and threshold, or, or threshold equals equals 0 0.01 or threshold equals equals 0 0.02. But that gets really long and tedious and painful. What we can do instead uh, is percent in percent. And you'll see from my typo that I just had that it's really hard for me to remember not to use the pipe operator when I start typing with percents. So what we're going to do is define a vector of thresholds that we want to look at. So I'm going to look at 0, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, and 0 0.05, okay? So we'll look at six different regions. It's probably too many. Um, we might also instead want to look between 0 and 0 0.01. So we'll look at this plot, look at what it looks like, and then we'll come back and reassess what threshold levels we're looking at. But this should clean up the output a little bit. And um, it does look better. And we see um, what? So this red line is exact sequence variants, right? So that's an ESV. 95% of the genomes have um, um, many, many copies, right? So if you have seven uh, operons, then 95% of the genomes are going to have uh, seven different copies of the EASV in the genome. So that's a lot, right? Um, and if we look at the subregions, we see that that goes down. And again, if you look at higher thresholds or the higher diameter for how we're defining an amplicon sequence variant, we see that that gets muted as well. Um, maybe what I'll do to make this output a little bit easier to look at will be to say n row equals four. Um, and I will make that taller. So I'll maximize that window, make it look a little bit more attractive. And maybe what I'll do is I will go ahead and get rid of uh, these higher to the 0 0.04 and 0 0.05. It looks like we do want to look between at these kind of hundredths place uh, levels um, because um, it seems like there's still stuff going on um, at these levels. And um, again, you could kind of contextualize this however you'd like. The other thing I'm going to do to make to give more room on the right here is this as character threshold. I'm going to pull that out and make a mutate. Um, so threshold is as dot numeric or as character, right? And we'll pipe that in and I can then remove this as character bit. And that will then, instead of saying as character threshold as the variable name in the legend, it's going to give us threshold. And so we can see um, that like an exact sequence variant um, for V4, uh, still is 95% of the genomes um, at a 
decent level of uh, number of copies in the genome is still giving us three or four different uh, ESVs, right? Uh, so it's splitting one genome into multiple taxonomic bins. And again, that's at a 90% confidence, uh, 90, 95 percentile. Um, and so again, this is good because it, um, it shows us the number of copies within a genome and that 95th percentile by our different regions and our different thresholds. We can flip this in the second question by looking at the 95th percentile for the number of EASVs for those genomes with a defined number of copies per genome. And so we could pick seven. And so what we'll do is very similar to what we did above. Uh, so ESVs by threshold region. And we will then say, um, I'm gonna leave out the filter for now and the mutate. Let's go to the ggplot. AES and our X is in this case going to be threshold. And our Y is going to be the upper bound. And we are going to um, color by region. Um, and we want to, because I wanna look at say seven copies, I'm gonna go ahead and filter N um, RNs equals equals seven, and then pipe that into my plot. So let's go ahead and run that and see what this looks like. Ah, I forgot a geom. Geom line, so we'll look at that. And again, for some reason, I don't know why I keep putting the color in quotes. We now see our thresholds on the x-axis and our region um, is a different, each region is a different color. And so we see in this case um, that like the V19 um, never gets below two, even if we go out to 5%. And so even like a 5% OTU, 95% of the genomes are um, getting split into um, uh, two, two different bins. And so that's not so desirable. Um, we see like V4, um, for the most part, it does come down to uh, one genome for like a three and 5%. I'm not sure what's going on up here, but you kind of see that as you come down and you expand your threshold, um, you're collapsing these ESVs or e ASVs um, into a single one per genome per species in, in our analysis. Um, and so all these calls to use really fine thresholds, um, really, um, really fracturing genomes into multiple bins. And that's not biological, right? Um, there's no reason why one genome would, one part of the genome would respond differently than another part of the genome um, in your analysis. That doesn't really make ecological sense, right? Um, you know, my, my hand doesn't have a different ecology than my right hand, right? Um, it's kind of the same type of analogy. One thing we can think about is, again, if I drop this prob to 90, and then rerun my analyses. Um, and looking at my plots, that you'll see at a 90% threshold, um, this does kind of dampen a bit, um, as well as this one, right? And so at a 90% confidence, our V19 um, does drop to one or two copies at that 3% threshold, whereas all the other regions really um, crash, crash out at about 1.5% to one copy per genome. So again, I'm not sure that 95 percentile is where we want to be at. Um, 90% um, seems a little bit more generous. Ultimately, it's really going to determine or depend on uh, what you're trying to do and what gives you the, the most taxonomic resolution. Um, or the, for, for your particular data set. And so uh, you'll recall that, um, you know, a lot of the things in our database are genomes that have been sequenced. And so we're skewed by things that have genomes that have been sequenced, um, as well as, um, you know, those tend to also be more clinically relevant than perhaps environmentally relevant. So um, it, it all depends. Um, and again, this is a threshold of seven. Um, if I go back to a 95th percentile, run that. And uh, let's look at four, say like a genome that had four copies. Um, we see that even with a high threshold, if I look at genomes that only have four copies per genome, 
that we do get down to one um, EASV for the entire genome if you use a threshold of two or three percent. That's certainly a much higher threshold and broader threshold than the proponents of EASV, ASVs or ESVs push, which is much lower down here, right? My conclusions inc would include um, saying, so I'm going to, maybe I'll leave this here, and I'll say um, uh, analysis depends on our threshold or our, um, our uh, comfort with uncertainty. So prob equals uh, 90 percentile or 95 percentile. Um, and the number of um, RN copies per genome. Right, um, and um, kind of regardless of the number of operons, or um, region, we need a significantly higher uh, threshold than ES ESVs or even um, traditional, I'll put that in quotes because traditional is like a couple of years, <laughs> um, traditional ASVs are defined at. Um, frankly, 0.03% um, or 0. I'm sorry, 3% doesn't look so bad for this type of analysis. Okay. And I'll correct all my typos. Someday I'll learn to type slower <laughs> and more precise. So there's a lot more we could do with this type of analysis, right? I could have bundled this in a package and I could have made a bunch of plots. Um, perhaps I could have looked at different probabilities. So I could have picked um, a threshold um, or I, I, yeah, I could have picked, um, I could put, put my probabilities across the X axis, my, th um, and my number, and then perhaps my threshold on the Y axis and plotted the threshold that gives me one ASV, um, for each level of, um, uncertainty, right? Um, so there's lots we could do, but I think this gives us a pretty good sense of what thresholds we need to collapse the diversity of ESVs down to a single one for genomes and genomes of different numbers of copies per genome. So I'll go ahead and save this. Um, I'm gonna uh, close that and I'll go ahead and make it. So I'll do make exploratory 2020, 11, 24. Um, and this we wanna do MD, not RMD. We'll generate that. I'll go ahead and commit the uh, change to the issue. Um, merge it to the main branch and we'll be good to go. So over the next several episodes, we're probably not gonna learn a whole lot of new R concepts, but we're gonna look at this problem that I talked about today, um, perhaps in different contexts. The flip side of using a broader threshold to get fewer EASVs per genome, um, then is that we increase the probability that the ASV that we see in one genome is also seen in another genome or another species. And so something that we'll want to think about in the subsequent episodes is how do we balance that um, and, and perhaps what is more important to us. All right, so I'll go ahead and commit this um, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club. Please be sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Um, tell your friends about the videos and be sure if you're in the US or if you're anywhere, uh, have a great week, rest of your week. This is Thanksgiving here in the US and we'll talk to you next time.